In this introduction, we just want to quickly make some key points that I hope you can pay attention to. And that is when we talk about distributive bargaining, remember distributive? What are some of the key points? Well, the main key point is win-lose, right? Everything you lose, the other side gets. Everything you get, the other side loses. Key point, right? So we're gonna keep that in mind. Please don't forget it. So what do we wanna do when we're having a distributive negotiation? What is it we actually want to execute? Well, there's a few key points that we need to pay attention to. And they include things such as, number one, find the other side's resistance point. I think this is really important. Find the other side's resistance point. Remember the resistance point is the point at which the other side is going to give up or walk away that they think it's not useful for them, not valuable for them, so they're gonna just stop. Well, if you can find out what that resistance point is, then what your goal is, is to get as close as possible to that resistance point. So, can you find the resistance point? That's what you want to do. That's the, tac that's the goal of your tactics today. Okay, number two, you want to influence the other side's guesses of your resistance point. Remember, your resistance point is secret. You want to keep it secret. So, why would you tell the other side? The answer is you don't tell the other side, but you try to influence the other side to guess wrong. So, if you're a seller, you want them to think that your price has to be high. If you're a buyer, you want them to think your price has to be low, of course. Number three, you want to change the outcome valuations. What are outcome valuations? Outcome valuations is, remember those two questions we asked? How important is the deal? And how important is the relationship? Well, you can change that. You can tell them, well, in the future, I'm gonna give you something special. If you make a relationship with me, I'm gonna give you something to your benefit in the future. So by changing the outcome valuations, you actually can change the negotiation situation. Okay, and then the next thing is influence the cost of delaying the negotiation. Why is delaying so important? Because delaying is about we need to hurry and get this done. And if you make me delay, I'm going to lose my opportunity, right? If I need to buy the product for Christmas, and now it's already November, it's already getting very, very late. If you make me delay, then I may lose my opportunity. Now, in your RPG game that you're going to play, this is very important because as you search for a buyer or as you search for a seller, you have a limited amount of time. Not because I limit your time. I, I don't limit your time. Your negotiations can be as fast or as slow as you like. The problem is that when you're searching for a buyer or when you're searching for a seller, all the other groups are also searching for buyers and sellers. And if they find the buyers and sellers before you, then your chance to get a buyer or a seller goes down. So delaying can give you a lot of pressure. And if your group, for example, has something everybody wants, if your group has a really good product at a really good price and a really good shipping time, then if you delay, that may make other groups offer you more. On the other hand, if you don't have such a good product or you don't have such a good shipping or you don't have so much good, then that means a delay could hurt you. So delaying the negotiation is a key tactic to this distributive negotiation. Delaying. Now, you should not always delay. Sometimes delay 
sometimes don't delay. It depends on your situation. Okay, so that's really what we're talking about for tactics. These are the things you can do, or these are the goals that you need to obtain through your tactics. All right. Okay, is everybody close enough to hear me? Okay, I covered the dialogue very well in the video lecture, so I don't want to just repeat it here, so I'm not going to do that. I just want to refresh your memory a little bit, right? So make sure you watch the video, the lecture video. And right now, I'm just going to quickly talk about the main points here. So again, today's topic is distributive tactics. Two words that I want you to remember, distributive. And tactic is how do you actually do it, right? How do you actually get it done? So in this dialogue, we have uh, the family dialogue, which is Jane and Ted, right? Jane and Ted. What's up with Jane and Ted? They have an interesting situation, don't they? They want to buy a television. And so, what's the deal? The deal is Ted wants to get a new HD TV, and Jane, his wife, is not too happy about that. So, this is a pretty common situation, I think. Someone wants to get something, the other person maybe wants it, but they don't want to spend the money for it. So we have a negotiation situation, right? What's Jane's main point? We can't afford it. And what does Ted say? Ted's like, yeah, that's kind of true. We can't afford it. So what are we going to do? We can't afford it. Well, if we can't afford it, I guess we cannot buy it. But if we don't, if we decide not to buy it, there's nothing to negotiate about. Now, in this case, there's really going to be difficult. It's really going to be difficult to find a way that to have win-win because Jane's main point is we don't want to spend the money, right? Uh, I think this is pretty common. And she's not sure if she really needs a new TV. It's kind of, but not super sure. I guess Ted's into TV or something. Maybe he likes to watch some shows, so he's really into it. So, in this distributive situation, what are we going to do? Well, the solution is somebody's going to have to give something up and somebody's going to have to gain something, right? Either Ted is not going to get the TV and Jane's going to save the money or Ted's going to get the TV and Jane's going to spend the money she doesn't want to spend. There's really no other way around it. So, in this case, let's look at what the tactic used by Ted is. What's Ted's tactic? Hmm, Ted does something very interesting. He changes the outcome. He changes the outcome. How does he change the outcome? Well, originally, he said he wants to get an HD TV. And that's okay, I guess. But then what does he say? He says, well, actually, it's not for me. It's not for me. What Ted's doing is he's saying, you know, let me explain to you why this is important for you too, Jane. Why is this important for Jane? And what he explains is about their mother coming to visit. I think it's Jane's mother, right? So this would be Ted's mother-in-law, <laughs> right? So Ted says, it's not for me, it's for your mom. And so he explains that your mom has an HD TV, your mom loves to watch TV, your mom's into TV, right? And your mom at her home has HD TV, and she's going to come here and help us with the children. She's going to babysit for us, or she's going to stay with us for the summer. And so wouldn't it be really hard for her to have this old TV? And so by explaining it this way, what Ted is doing is he's changing the outcome. 
come. He's changing the end of the negotiation. He's making the negotiations outcome different than what Jane thought it was. And so by doing this, Jane can actually change her valuation. She says, well, maybe then spending money on this is not so bad after all, right? Maybe this is not so bad. Maybe it's not just for me, and I don't watch TV very much, and it's not just for Ted, who watches TV too much, he's too lazy. It's actually for my mom. In that case, the money may be worthwhile. So this is a really easy to understand, simple, and useful example of how to change the outcome. Any questions on this uh, example here, this really simple but interesting example? Any questions? Our family example? No, no questions here? Okay, if there's no questions, we're going to move on to the next dialogue, which is a business dialogue. And let me see, are those on our slides here? Let me look up at our slides. Let me fly up here and see. We got Ted and Ken beginning here, yes. Oh yeah, okay, so we can just stay in this room for now. Come back down again, and back up. Okay, so the next one is on these slides also. Okay, my audio working for everybody still? Still clear? Everything clear? Can you understand me? Okay, good. If there's any problem, don't be shy, let me know. Okay, now we're gonna look at a business negotiation uh, distributive situation. And so if we look at that, let's begin with this Ted and Ken. Now, I don't want to read it all again because I did that in the, in the class lecture online, which I hope you can go see. But what I do want to point out is if we read this negotiation line by line, what do we see? We can see that it's really going slow. The negotiation is going very, very slow. It's like every point, every piece Every idea in the negotiation, every attribute needs to be argued about, needs to be talked about. Each one is saying, no, I can't do that. And then the other person says, no, I can't do that. And then Ted says, no, I can't give you any more. And Ken says, no, we have to have more. And so each one, step by step by step, is argued about this way. That's a clear sign that this is a distributive negotiation. Each side knows exactly what they want inside their goal package. Each side is going to be very tough in negotiating. Each one is very clear. Everything that they give, the other side gains. And everything the other side gains is their loss, right? So this trade-off is very, very clear. In the end, what did we get in this dialogue here between Ted and Ken. Well, in the end, they slowly change their positions. I think there was a little bit more of a discount given, and there was a little bit more commitment to the future. So, in the end, they did give up something. Both sides gave up something, but they were very hesitant to do so, fighting very hard. So, I want you to pay attention to this example dialogue very closely, because I find that many of my students are not really tough negotiators. They're kind of, well, they would like to take it easy, kind of, for a while, and talk about things in a nice way. But you know, that's not gonna work in a distributive negotiation. You really need to be tough. You really need to fight for every point. Okay, now of course, if your negotiation position is not very strong, if your products are not very good quality, if your products are already higher priced than the company, this will make your negotiation situation even harder. I'm not saying it's easy. It is hard. And reading this dialogue, you can see step by step by step. It can be a very slow process. All right, everybody, let's go to the next room, practice. Come on. 
everybody going to the practice room all right everybody come on follow me to the practice room so we just start talking here about this section which are the vocab words and examples and I'm not gonna do a lot here I want you to look at this yourself and get ready for your negotiation but you can see from these sentence examples I want you to practice them when you get a chance you can see that these are very related to a tough negotiation holding out not giving in asking for more and trying to get more from the other side keep your secret secret or try to influence the other side to think they know your secret but actually they don't okay so let me very quickly fly over here you can follow me if you want to just fly up here see if I can find a couple really interesting words And I think hold out is probably one of our key words here. Hold out, meaning you don't want to give in. I'm holding out. We cannot hold out. We must hold out. So hold out is a great one. Final push. The final push. Even though today what we're talking about is tough negotiation, still you need to get to the end, right? And part of a tough negotiation that makes it tough is how to get to the end. That's called the final push. Not easy to do. And the one I really like here, I, I don't know why I like this word so much. It just seems really useful. I often hear this in negotiation is this word here, authorize. Authorize. Lots of people like to use this word, authorize. But they usually use it as saying, I am not authorized to give you what you want. I am not authorized to reduce the price 10%. I would like to give you that. I would like to give you what you want. I would like to give you more, but I am not authorized, right? That's very often the way this word is used. And I guess I just hear it a lot and that's why it's very helpful. So when you negotiate with your teams, one tactic is that people on your team can go to other teams and ask about resistance points, ask about uh, product offerings, ask about list price. They can ask these things, but then they can say in return, oh, I would like to give you that, but I'm not authorized. I need to go check with my boss. And then they go back to their team. And this makes the negotiation slow down. And why is it good to slow down a negotiation? Well, it's good if your position is good and the other side's position is not so good. So if you have something that the other side wants, then you can slow down the negotiation and that way they have to give you more. So I love this word, authorize. Okay, we're going off to the follow-up room. Come on, everybody. Filming the homework. Ah, yeah, right, your homework. I did see that, and that's uh, exciting stuff. But it didn't take two days to do that, did it? Is it so hard? No, it took, like, around two hours for each clip. Yeah, yeah, it's very time-consuming, isn't it? Uh, the time-consuming part is to write the script. Because <laughs> I, I, I only did chapter 6. Before that, it was um, Robert and Antonio doing the script. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's not easy to get ready for that. You can't just make it up off the top of your head. Is that what you're telling me? Um, actually, you can make up the, the conversation. The hard part is to fit in the words, because yeah. you... you they require us to put in so many technical words that we have to use. Exactly right. So that is challenging and that's why 
We try to minimize our class time, not to suck down too much time, and give you more time to work on that. So yeah, I fitting actually had a small argument with Robert about it. Go on, tell me what's your argument with Robert. Because, um, he was telling me that the ma main point of having making a video is to put in the vocabularies, and then I was just saying that I think the more important part is to, um, to get the idea of that chapter of, um, what the negotiating, negotiating skill that you want us to use in that chapter. But he, he's telling me that the, the first... Uh, thing that we have to care about is to use all the vocabularies in the list. Well, it sounds to me like you're both right. <laughs> because if you just use the words in the list, you could make one long sentence with every word. <laughs> it just has conjunctions like and, and, and. <laughs> that wouldn't be too good. So yeah, I do want the words to be used because the reason is I'm concerned many of our students don't know some of these words or never practiced them before. But at the same time, your point's right, too. I want people to understand the idea of the chapter. So that's why I do think you're right. It's a challenge to be able to write a script where you can put all the words in, but you can also have meaning to them. Otherwise, it's kind of meaningless if you just list the words, right? So, for example, for the distributive chapter, I could make a long sentence that says, uh, your hostility has left me left over with no room to maneuver. It is pointless to raise any more. I will not tell you my resistance point because I will not take a loss. That is my final ultimatum. <laughs> you see, I could make a really long sentence like that, but it's stupid. <laughs> I see. So I think you're both right. That's my point. You're both right. It's a little bit challenging that way, I agree. Thanks for your information. It's good to know. Good to know you're working hard on the weekend. Yeah, sure. I enjoyed writing the script. <laughs> Being a script writer is not easy. That's why they make a lot of money in Hollywood. Um, actually, uh, there, there's a, a movie series, uh, a TV series, actually, um, which affected me a lot recently. It's called The Suits. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. Tell me more about it. The Suits. Yeah, you should check it out. It's a story about um, two lawyers, Harvey Specter and Mike Ross. Oh, okay, I've heard those names before, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, you should check it out. Then we can talk about it. It's, it's really awesome. The Suits. Is that, is that new, a new uh, season, a new, a new series? It's on season three right now. Oh, okay. So yeah. maybe I can pick up the old seasons on Netflix, maybe? You would... I bet you would like it from the first episode. Okay, I'm trying to see where I can find it at. Maybe it's on... Who produced it? Maybe it's on Netflix, the old... The first I'm season. pretty sure you can get it easily, because I, I, I googled it for like two minutes and I got it. Okay. Oh, it's on the Universal Cable Channel. I see. USA Network. Oh, yeah. Okay. They've been doing a lot lately. In fact, this sounds like um, the USA Network. They're the ones that produced that one with the uh, advertising agency guys. My son likes that one a lot. Okay. Created by Aaron Korsh and Patrick Adams. Look, I'll check it out. Oh, it's a comedy drama, all right. And that influenced you a lot, you say? Yeah, it did. <laughs> okay. I quit from it a lot these days. All right, great. Thanks for that input. I'll look into it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the main uh, follow-up to this uh, chapter. And this is really important, so I want to kind of make my points clear as, as clear as possible. And if you have any question, please... Feel free to push the talk or raise your hand and talk. Or just ask me a question any time is fine. I think uh, this picture here I have with, with the two lines going uh, one horizontal and one slowly going down is my key thing I want to cover today. Or not just today, but right now. And this idea is when you're in a distributive negotiation is very important that the other side feels or has a, a, a kind of interpretation or they think 
that you're giving them something. Of course, as we've said before, in a distributive negotiation, everything you give up, you're going to lose and the other side is going to gain. So we want to do that as little as possible. But we have also said in a negotiation, you cannot get to the end if both sides don't give up something, right? We just hope that we give up less and they give up more. That's our, that's our hope, that's our goal. So how do we do that? How do we help the other side to give us more and for us to give less? Well, one key idea is to make the other side think you're giving up something and also to make the other side think that very soon you have nothing more to give up. Now, how do we do that? Well, I like this chart here with the two lines. And the way this works is you're going to begin by giving up something, for example, on the price. And let me move over here. You can follow me. Everybody follow me. I'll come over here where the lines are. Everybody follow me over here. This is what I'm talking about. So I might as well stand over here. Here we go. Come on over here, everybody. Okay, so this is the picture I'm talking about, these two lines. And so the idea is this. Uh, sometimes this, this picture is so simple, it should be easy to understand, but actually, I don't think I drew it very well. My students are often confused. Sometimes it even confuses me. What we have here are two different tactics. One is, I give up four dollars, and then later I give up another four dollars, then later I give up another four dollars. So the, the line that says four, 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 that line there is saying, I'll give you four dollars. Okay, I'll give you another four dollars. Okay, I'll give you another four dollars. And that's okay, that means you're giving up something. The problem is the other side will think, well, you gave me four, and then you gave me four, and then you gave me four again, so now could you please give me another four? In other words, it doesn't seem like you're really getting close to your resistance point. And remember, our, our goal, both sides goal is to get as close to the resistance point of the other side as possible, but not go past it. Because if you go past it, the negotiation may be over. They may just walk away. So how can we make the other side feel that they're getting very close to our resistance point, even though they may not be. The way to do that is to slowly decrease, in this case not so slow, basically in half. So we begin by giving $4, then we cut that in half, then we give $2, then we cut that in half, then we give $1. Can we give any more? Well, at least the other side feels our concessions what we're giving them are getting smaller and smaller. So what would we give them next? I mean, if, if the other side was paying attention, if they're watching us very closely, first we gave $4, then we gave $2, then we gave $1. What would they think they can get next from us? Anybody have an idea? What would be the next amount that they could get from us? Well, that would be half a dollar, right? I mean, if they, if they pay attention and they follow, right, half a dollar is getting pretty small. And then after half a dollar, just a quarter. And after a quarter, just uh, 13 cents. And after 13 cents would be just, what, six cents. So this way, our concessions make the other side feel that, hey, they're getting close to our resistance point. It may be totally untrue, right? We may have lots we can give them, but we're not, we don't want to give it. So this is the idea I really want to emphasize. That is, we give up concessions. We give up in a way that makes the other side feel you're very close to the end. The other line was $4, $4, $4. That's always giving up this big amount and the other side thinks, hey, no problem, give me more. That's, very, that's a very big mistake, isn't it? Another big mistake people make is they just say, I give you nothing. I give you nothing. And then, you, and then you negotiate a long time and you just say nothing. I give you nothing. You just keep saying nothing. You don't say $4, $4, $4. Rather, you say nothing, 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 nothing. Always give you nothing. Well, that's easy to say, but what ends up happening 
is the negotiation can end up stopping, just ending. Or, more importantly, if your position is not very strong, that is, the thing you have to offer, your product, is maybe not the best. The price, you don't, you don't have the lowest. The quality, you don't have the highest. If your position is not really strong, you really need to get a deal as quickly as possible because other companies that have a better position than you, they may come in and get a better deal. They may take away the opportunity from you. And when we play our RPG, this is really kind of important because you have to go to each group and we only have so many groups. Half of our groups maybe will be buyers. Half of our groups will maybe be sellers. Sometimes it's not half. Sometimes almost everyone is a seller and just a couple are buyers. In that case, you have a time pressure. So this is how complicated it is. So if you say, I'm going to give you nothing, 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 the problem with that is you may run out of time and other companies may beat you to getting a deal. You say, well, my position is very good. I can wait to get a deal. And yeah, that may be true. You can wait longer, but you can't wait forever, right? If you end up waiting, even though you have a strong position, you may have nobody who will buy your product or you may have no one to sell your product to. So I really like this picture because it gives us that feeling of make the other side feel or think they're getting near your resistance point. The other picture there is the arrow moving from the left to the right, beginning with the opening offer and the opening attitude, the first concession, more concessions, and then the final offer. My main point here is very simple, that when you negotiate in the distributive situation, there tends to be two basic attitudes you can use. One is tough. I'm very tough. I'm not going to give you anything. And another one is friendly. Oh, I want to work together with you. I want to try to work with you. I want to give you what you want. Now, in both cases, uh, we're still distributive. We're still trying to win. Still win, lose. So when they think you're giving them something, you're being friendly, maybe you give them something at the beginning that they like. The problem is you can't keep giving them things they like because then you'll lose more and more. So when you're taking a friendly position, you begin by giving something that the other side wants, but then quickly you stop giving things or you slow down very quickly. You give them a 10% discount and then after that you say, I can't give you anything more. That's all I can give. There's no more left. And then maybe they argue for a while. Maybe you, uh, you talk for a long time. You negotiate for a while and then what you give them one percent the other way is the tough negotiation you begin by saying i can give you nothing i can give you nothing i can give you nothing i give you one percent maybe maybe one percent and then later maybe you give them a couple percent but they have to work on it very hard so the tough position you begin tough and you give a little bit give a little bit give a little bit give a little bit and over time it adds up to be something that the other side likes. On the friendly position, you begin by giving something bigger at the beginning, but then quickly you give less or nothing or something very small. In either case, you need to have that idea of not giving more and more, but making sure that you make the other side feel you're near the end. You have nothing more you can give. Okay, any questions about this distributive tactics we're talking about here? This is very practical information, I think. Very, very practical. Very applied. And you'll use it in your RPG when we play our game, I hope. Okay, if there's any questions, just raise your hand or press the talk and speak out. I'm open to questions. Okay, everybody, we're going to the exercise room. Follow me. Okay, everybody, come on.
Ooh, we still got a couple people here. That's almost everybody. Okay. Okay, everybody, this is the exercise room, and these exercises are in your book. I hope you can take some time to fill in the gaps. This is a mostly gap exercise, I think. And you're just trying to match up some vocabulary words so you get used to them. Remember, the reason I emphasize vocabulary is two points. One, we want to improve our English vocabulary. And number two, we want to get used to using these negotiation kind of technical words more often because they really have the idea to help us think in this way. Okay, so I'm not going to cover this now. You can do that on your own. And let's fly through this room and jump over the next room. Follow me. However, because we're in the virtual space, it's a little bit difficult to do. I just trust that you'll take some time in your spare time to put the words into the crossword puzzle. It's a great way to practice your brain and have a little bit of a challenge by using a crossword puzzle. Not something killer hard. I think you're making your videos much harder than this, but give it a try. So I just emphasize when you get a chance, please give that a shot. Okay, so we're going to fly into the next room now. So I just want to very quickly remind you about these things. So let's everybody follow me into room 8, which is the word bank. Okay, so we're here in the word bank. And again, I'm just here to remind you how to use this. The word bank is a great resource to prepare your script for your video because we have the words and phrases here and example sentences with them. So a great way to uh, get ready for your video. All right, so I think that's just about it for this part. We want to also cover today one more part, and that's going to be part number six, All right? Part number six, integrative bargaining. So what I want to do is we're going to take a break for 10 minutes and then we're going to jump back over. So I'm going to go back to the main hallway and in the main hallway, uh, I'll wait for you there before we go into the next uh, part. So you can go out the exit door leads to the main hallway. Exit. Okay, everybody just about ready. All right, then follow me. Let's move over here towards the doors. I guess we're done waiting for everybody, so let's just go ahead in the room number one. We're going to start off on this part now. So follow me, everybody. Room number one. Come on over here. Yep, you can fly up and see things. Fly up and see the slides more clearly if you need to. I'm going to fly up here myself.
forget you can fly on up here. Okay, great. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and begin then. I guess we're done waiting for everybody. If they're not going to catch up with us, they'll have to try to get by or watch the video. So what we want to do today is look at the distributive tactics. And the distributive tactics, of course, is directly related to the chapter on distributive bargaining. And remember, let me remind you, distributive bargaining is about what? It's about win-lose, right? Key point, win-lose. So in the distributive bargaining tactics section, what are we going to be learning about? We're going to be learning about how to actually execute or how to actually talk, what to do, what to say, how to act when we actually do a distributive negotiation. Okay, so let's look at some of these words here to get a better idea of the common vocabulary used in the distributive tactic. And these words, as we read them, you'll get a feeling for them as they are words related to pushing the other side to give you something. And at the same time, you trying to hold on to not give the other side something. Right, that's the key point here. Because remember, in a distributive situation, everything you give up, the other side gains. And everything the other side gives up, you gain. Let me just quickly jump over some of these, such as afford and approve and authorize. These are the A words, right? Authorize is a really good one because authorize means how much are you allowed to give? How much are you allowed to give? In other words, your boss told you you can negotiate between price 100 and price 150, but you are not authorized to go over 150. In a way, authorize is trying to tell the other side about your uh, target price and a little bit about your resistance point. So if you told someone, well, I am not authorized, I am not authorized to give you a discount of over 10%, then the other side may think your resistance point is 10%. Even though that may not be true, or it may be true, I don't know. Again, this is very complicated. So authorize is a great word. We often see salespeople use this word, authorize. Commit and commitment, meaning can you give me a commitment? Can you tell me something for sure? Concession, meaning to give in. Exploit, of course, is very important for distributive because everything the other side gives up is something you gain. You need to exploit that, get the most out of it. The final push or the holdout, these are two good words related to, or phrases related to, as your negotiation moves forward, you need to push it to the end. That's called the final push. And maybe one side will hold out. That means they won't give up. They won't give in. That's called holding out. Of course, you want to influence the other side. So that's our next word, influence. Informal, sometimes this can be used very helpful to say, let me informally tell you that is not official, not the contract, not written down, but let me tell you my resistance point informally. Let me tell you informally. Of course, it may be true, it may not be true. Inventory, limit, outcome, payment, priority. These are all pretty normal words dealing with inventory and products and shipping. Production is also very commonly used. We're going to talk about production or RPG a lot. And then, of course, some of the key words here is the word secret. Keep your secret information secret. And then we have another word, shipment. Shipment is because in our RPG we're going to be talking about shipping time. Very important. 
to finish these, these word list off, we're going to talk about a few more words such as split, cut it into smaller parts, special offer, let me give you a special offer, terms, terms are all of the details of the agreement, tough stand is one I want to pay attention to because taking a tough stand means you don't give in. The other side may take a tough stand, or you may take a tough stand, meaning that you're using a distributive approach and you're not going to give in easily. You really hold on for every dollar, for every cent. And the last one is valuation. Okay, I'm not going to go over these words in too detail because it's in the lecture and I want you to study them in your book. And I also want you to practice them because I want you to get ready for your RPG. But you can see the list of words here tend to be, um, how to say, tough, confrontational, distributive, win-lose. They're pushing to get something. They're not talking about cooperation. They're not talking about working together. They're not talking about explain things to me. They're basically saying, this is what I've got and I'm not going to give up and I want to influence the other side to give me more. I don't want to give any concessions. I don't want to make any commitments. I cannot do anything until I have authorization. I cannot do this until it's approved. Let me tell you my secret information, even though it's not secret. And we don't have much time left. We have to have a final push. So you see all of these words I'm saying come from this list and all of these words are kind of distributed. That means win-lose, pushing to get something and trying to not give up something. Okay, so let me just very quickly, I want everyone to get the main point here and that is last week and this week, distributive. So I want everyone to use this word with me because it's very important. I want you to say the word with me one time. I think we practiced it last week and everybody did very good. But I want you to practice again because this is a key word, distributive. So everyone push the talk and you can say the word with me, distributive. Distributive. getting like one or two people here. Come on, everybody. Distributive. Right. Distributive. Okay. Okay, then. So, that's our word list. Let me just check on the text here.